they're hugely nutritious. What they don't have is they don't have a lot of calories. And in fact, that could be a good thing in today's society of calorie-rich food. In terms of a protein source, they have all nine essential amino acids in roughly the same proportion found in eggs. They are a first-rate, top-quality protein source. My name is Barry Pryor. I'm a professor in plant pathology and microbiology in the School of Plant Sciences at the University of Arizona. My office is a reflection of my passions. As you can see, I'm a fisherman, and I'm a botanist, and I'm also a mycologist. Someone who studies fungi. This whole program started with the mycocats, recycling with mushrooms. The Mycocats is a student-run recycling program funded by the Green Fund through the Office of Sustainability. What we do is take waste products from the University of Arizona campus, um, such as mesquite pods, pizza boxes, coffee grounds, and we grow mushrooms on these substrates. I think they're really interesting and they're really useful organisms. They can break down molecules and filter uh, contaminants out of water and turn it all into a usable biomass. This is our mushroom laboratory. This is where we conduct studies, conduct research on optimizing growing conditions to optimize the yield for the mushrooms. The three most important parameters to control in a controlled environment agricultural system for growing mushrooms are temperature, humidity, and carbon dioxide levels. For many centuries, mushrooms were thought as being interesting plants. They have many features similar to plants. They produce kind of a fruiting structure. They have roots of mycelium and they produce spores which are kind of like seeds. But increasingly as we learn more and more we found that in fact they're not related to plants at all. They're their own kingdom and perhaps more closely related to animals than they are to plants. About 20,000 species of mushrooms have been described out of perhaps two to five million species of fungi. Of those 20,000, about 600 to 1,000 are known to be edible. About 10 of them are commercially produced on a large scale. One of the mushrooms we're growing right now is a blue oyster mushroom. It's an incredibly versatile mushroom, a very delicious mushroom, um, but it is sensitive to high temperatures. And over 70 degrees, this mushroom will not produce any longer. In the warmer temperatures, we may produce what's known as the phoenix oyster mushroom even more delicious than the blue oyster mushroom, this mushroom can produce at much higher temperatures, up to 80 degrees, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Another interesting mushroom we're growing is the lion's mane mushroom. Now, this is a unique mushroom, quite different than our oyster mushrooms, and one of the properties of the lion's mane, in addition to its flavorful properties, is that it has these nutraceutical, nutritional properties that promote health and promote longevity. We harvest the mushrooms and we actually sell these mushrooms back to dining services and they use them in many of their catering offerings. Such as a mushroom burger that's provided on one of the restaurants on campus. Order up! I eat mushrooms regularly, several times a week. It's a huge economic potential. The mushroom industry is growing by perhaps 10 to 20 percent annually. And this growth is really experienced worldwide. I think it's a good thing because we need to conserve the resources that we're provided with. Um, they're not unlimited. And finding a way to recycle them in a clean manner is uh, really important for our future. If you look around my office, you can see many objects that are art-inspired, but with their foundation in mycology.
I teach the students about the biology, the ecology, the sociology behind fungi and their impacts on human and human activities. But at the end of the class, we have an art festival. It's a special project that all students have to do, and they have to create a piece of art, and it has to be based upon mushrooms or fungi in some manner or another. I tell the students we're all artists, and I'd like to see them integrate fungi into their art passions. Thank you.